Hello everyone, today I have a sketching tutorial for you. So we are going to sketch these buildings. You can download the reference photo from the video description below. Now this photograph was taken during a very cloudy day, so there are no strong cast shadows. And this was taken during the evening time, so the colors, they are not particularly vibrant, especially when there is no strong sunlight and i was squatting down while taking this photo so we don't see much of the ground we see a lot of the buildings at the top but not much of the ground and this photo was taken with a wide angle lens so the vertical lines that are closer to the edge of the photo they are tilted in so this line here is supposed to be vertical but it's tilted in and this line here is actually supposed to be tilted but here it looks like it's vertical this is supposed to be vertical as well, and this is supposed to be tilted. Anyway, um, I will try to sort of uh, copy uh, what I see here. If I'm drawing this on location, I will be able to draw those vertical lines, but here, let's just use uh, what we have here. And the tools that I'll be using, this is the Pelican M200 fountain pen filled with sketch ink, which is waterproof when dry. And we will be painting with a limited color palette, which I'm going to show you later on what the colors are. And this is a customized sketchbook with hot press watercolor paper. All right, for this sketch, I'm going to go straight with ink. I'm going to start by drawing the trees on the left side and then draw this building, which is on the ground, this white building on the ground, right in the foreground. So I'm pointing my, I'm using the pen to measure the angle of the roof. So it's going to stop here and this line, it's tilted like this. So I'm going to draw really fast because the, I actually wanted to just uh, do a color study using the limited color palette. So I'm not going to like draw this, um, pay a lot of attention to draw this, but I'm still going to try and get this uh, structure right. So we have a lot of trees here and we have the this root divider here and we have some cars. The cars are quite challenging to draw especially if they are moving but I'm drawing from a reference photo so it's fine. We have some trees here as well and there seems to be this big block of concrete in front of the building. So later on I will be coloring um, this building with orange and drawing the white with white gel pen. So I'm going to leave some of, so I'm not going to draw the windows. So I'm just placing the trees. Okay, so this is pretty much pretty much it for the bottom of this building. I might go back to this area again to draw because this scene this scene is very beautiful, especially if there is good light. There seems to be a row of windows here. Using the height of this building in the foreground, uh, by comparing it to the tall building, the tall building is about about one and a half units high, so it should um, end right here. And the uh, top of the building is here. Now there's this um, um, structure, this grill-like structure on the building. I'm going to draw that with white gel pen later on. So now I'm just trying to get the perspective right. So okay, Come, there are one, two, three, four, four blocks. So this is one, two, three, and four. And this will be, the lines will be like this. Now as the diagonal lines go down to the horizon, they will become more and more horizontal. If this building is really tall, the 
diagonal lines right at the top will be like this because the vanishing point is somewhere on the right side all these diagonal lines they are affected by the vanishing point so if you cannot see the vanishing point um, you would have to measure the angles using the pen or pencil that you're using so these diagonal lines here are pointing to the vanishing point on the left side which is out of the pitch and this looks like a 45 degree so I need to draw this a bit deeper it may be helpful to actually point your finger um, at the vanishing point so that you can draw the diagonal line to your finger this would make the angles more accurate so this is building number one for the other tall building in the background the top will be here because it's aligned to this part here and seems like there are three parts so be it will be one part here down here the second part will be here and the last part will be here and there are some diagonal lines as well pointing to the right side because the vanishing point is to the right side and this part here it's very foreshortened now when I took this photograph um, immediately I knew I would want to go back and sketch this because this is such a good angle to sketch in these two buildings and lastly we have this um, tall building right in the background which is going to end here so for this building I'm going to draw with very thin lines by drawing very lightly with my fountain pen you can also turn your fountain pen nib to the other side to get those thin lines and I'll be drawing the windows uh, later on with tiny dots like this I'll fill up the dots later on okay so now let's add some little details um, let's draw the grill here so for the grill we have the grills in front of the building which is light against dark and then we have the grills behind the building which is which are the grills that I am drawing now which are dark against the light sky so for the white grills I will be drawing with the white gel pen and the grills they are following uh, perspective so they need to follow the perspective of the vanishing point so for this part here so these grills in front of the building uh, I'm just going to draw this particular one here and we'll go up here and the grill will continue here and it comes down like this and we have the grill in the background so I will leave the grills in front of the building to be drawn with the white gel pen so yep so this is pretty much the sketch without uh, drawn without a lot of details and now let me show you the colors that we will be using today this is schminker transparent orange or translucent orange po71 it's a very vibrant orange today i'll not be using yellow so we'll be using orange for the building in the foreground and this is what's this cobalt turquoise so daniel smith's uh, cobalt turquoise is called cobalt teal blue this is pg50 so i'll be using this for the sky next up we have ruby red pv19 also from schminker this is a very vibrant cool red 
So these three colors, uh, they are not exactly, I mean, these two colors are not exactly the primary colors like the true yellow or true blue. So the mixes later on is going to be a bit weird. I'll also need something dark. So I have dark indigo blue, which is PB60. So some other manufacturers, they call this indentron blue. So I need this to mix the really dark um, colors. All right, time to explore some color mixes. So I'm going to have translucent orange and this cobalt turquoise mixed together to see what kind of green we can get. Now cobalt turquoise or cobalt teal blue is a granulating color. So this is the green we can get a bit uh, it's a bit brownish I also want to mix translucent orange with ruby red you can actually if you want a vibrant orange you can actually just use translucent orange on its own because it's extremely vibrant So when you add it to ruby red, you get this uh, very nice red. A warmer red compared to just uh, ruby red by itself. Let's have ruby red and cobalt turquoise. This should be an interesting mix. Alright, this purple, can you see this purple? It's very vibrant, it's really nice. And let's have ruby red and indentrum blue or dark blue indigo. This should give us a darker purple. And let's see what we can get with translucent orange and this very dark blue. So we have this very uh, dark color, like a brown color, but it's a very um, dirty brown. So these are the possible mixes using these four colors. The limitation here is because there is no yellow, so we are not able to mix a vibrant green. So the only thing closest to greens here would be these two, which are obviously not green. Cobalt turquoise or cobalt teal blue, it's a very nice color for painting skies. And with that color, you can mix really beautiful purples or violets. The color separation is very beautiful. And this is with indentrum blue and PV19. Let's start by wetting the sky first so that we can paint it with cobalt turquoise. And this is cobalt turquoise. With a little bit of indentrum blue. So the strokes here up, up here, um, it's going to be bigger. The strokes towards the horizon are going to be smaller because things in the background, including clouds, they are going to be smaller. All right, this is too much water. So let me just pick up some of the excess water. So let's have the smaller strokes, shorter strokes in the horizon it may not even be that obvious so while waiting for the sky to dry let's paint the trees so as mentioned earlier uh, we are not going to be able to get like um, bright green so I'll be using this cobalt turquoise to mix the greens if I can mix the greens but first I want to paint this roof here first. So I'm going to have some uh, cobalt turquoise here and here. 
and maybe here for the road divider and maybe a little bit here and next let's paint the orange building so this is translucent orange and to get some variation I'm going to add some ruby red PV19 oh oh um, mistake here so this part here should be white should be white accidentally painted over that so it looks like it's a staining color so it's not going to lift completely let's have some orange here I'm being very careful not to touch the cobalt in the roof we can have a very light wash for this building in the background and for the towers I can see that the light source seems to be coming from this direction so this side here it's a bit lighter compared to the right side which is darker so I'm going to try and blend the cobalt blue into the darker indentrum blue or the dark indigo okay now um, this paper by the way the sizing yes this is that sketchbook with the deteriorated sizing so the paper fiber may actually look a bit off hopefully it still works because I cannot remember if I have uh, applied the watercolor ground on it to basically treat the paper all right I feel like this should be even darker so I've added a lot more cobalt turquoise and I'm going to add a lot more indentrum blue so now you see uh, when I have a lot more paint it looks like it's not I mean these colors they are not that transparent let's do the same for the left side and have it fade into indentrum blue here So for the trees, right at the bottom, it's going to be the blue and the orange. Let me try and get the shape of the tree right against the turquoise roof. I can also use the use indentrum blue to draw this black line below the roof. There is a black line and there is a white line, so I'm going to use white gel pen later on to draw the white line back later on. And we have some trees here as well. Kind of dark, so dark that I cannot even see what color uh, they are. Notice how the how the paper is repelling the paint. And we have some trees here on the right side as well. There is another building in the background um, with this uh, orange look to it. For the greys, I'm thinking of cobalt turquoise with, with translucent orange. See how the paper is repelling the paint. So this 
is obviously uh, not good. And it repels paint here as well, unfortunately. Right, so this part has dried. I'm going to use this color to paint the car here. For the other car, let's have it blue. Right, so this is almost dry. Earlier on, I used a lot of paint and it looks like the mix was opaque, but now when it's dry, it has lightened considerably. And now we can see the lines beneath. And compared to this tower on the left side, you can see it's much darker. So um, I probably should have made this darker, but anyway, I'm not going into layer another layer because um, it may make things worse. So I'm just going to leave this as it is. The next thing I want to do is probably to add some shadows beneath um, the roof here. So let's see if we can create some shadows. This is a mix of ruby red and indentrum blue. So if you want the shadows to be darker, you can use more indentrum blue. And I'm going to very quickly wash the brush very cleanly so that I can fit this. This is uh, this brush is still very dirty. So I need the brush to be very clean so that I can fit this into the orange. And the initial wash that you use um, is important. If the initial wash is not the staining type of uh, color, when you apply water again, you may actually pick up the paint from the initial wash. So I'm not sure if translucent orange is staining or not staining. Anyway, this um, looks all right. Um, I shall leave it as it is. It has already made the color less vibrant just by adding purple to create the shadows. So let me just touch up slightly and pull back some of the shadow areas. Hopefully we can get a bit of shadow but not that much shadow. For this part here, um, the right side here seems like it's much darker so I can actually uh, have this much darker. and this as well okay for the windows they are really dark so i'm just going to use concentrated um, um, indigo to draw those windows hopefully when they dry they don't dry too light and this building in the and on the left, it needs to have a bit more color. So I'm going to have a translucent orange, a bit more translucent orange for this building in the background. All right, I think it looks nicer now. More turquoise and orange. So we are not going to be able to get a green uh, with this mix so this is the best i can do i shall just leave it as it is everything has dried so now let's add some details let's have more windows here now the windows have to be arranged in a grid like manner they cannot appear to be random let's have more tree trunks here maybe some details the car looks like it's floating on the ground so let me just draw a wheel there and the shadow beneath the car and now we have the white against the building These diagonal lines, remember, they have to follow the perspective of the 
building and as the diagonal lines move closer to the horizon the lines will become horizontal we will be more horizontal same thing here so it's easier to see the white against this uh, darker background but here you see the white it's almost uh, you, you almost cannot see the white and this line here it's sloping and then curves here so I should have made the bottom here darker now I cannot see the bottom okay let's draw the perspective lines as the lines go up the angle will be steeper there are some pillars here so we have one here two and three and here as well these pillars they are aligned uh, top down and here as well I can also use the gel pen to add some details like windows the windows for this tower seems like uh, seems to be black so I'm gonna use this use my black pen to draw those windows so I'm supposed to draw a white line that separates the turquoise roof and the black shadow beneath with that added I can add little details like the windows windows that are uh, in the background they are going to be spaced closer together because of the foreshortening and uh, windows that are closer to us they are going to be spaced more apart further apart and this there seems to be this long thing here all right notice this color this red color it's not it should be darker so that we can get better contrast against the white but i suppose this um, still looks all right it could be better so this part here it's uh, it seems like it's, it looks better because there is a bit it's a bit darker here and we have another one here so I'm going to use my black pen to add those black window pins or maybe I should have used uh, the Posca marker oops yep uh, let me try the Posca markers let's paint over the black doesn't cover completely but I can go back and paint over the black again and here and here so for the windows here these are black nope wrong this is white so this whole thing here is supposed to be white we'll wait for this to dry and then go over it again this here is supposed to be white as well after going over this area a few times with the Posca marker so now I can draw the windows with black ink and here as well there are some road markings on the road so I'm going to draw those road markings you know what I forgot to paint this area here this area between the buildings this should be much darker 
like black type of dark so let me try and correct the mistake by going in to paint um, between the lines so if I have done this uh, correctly the first time around I wouldn't need to do this because this is obviously more challenging compared to having uh, drawing with the white gel pen notice after adding the dark shadows between the blocks this sketch looks much better so some details matter some details do not and these shadow areas here they do matter I need to draw some lines here as well I like this area here this um, obviously is not lit by light while this the front of the building is lit by light and translucent orange and ruby red it's a good combination the mix is very vibrant and cobalt turquoise it's a lovely color to use on its own this is the other building on the left and in the background all right i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below and if you want to check out more sketching tutorials you can visit the youtube playlist that i have for you in the video description below and if you want to watch even more in-depth tutorials i have many of them on my patreon page so you can consider supporting me on patreon to get access to all those full-length tutorials that i have made over the years uh, patreon by the way is a monthly subscription service where you can pledge a certain dollar amount to support the artists that you like and your support allows me to make all sorts of videos art videos on my youtube channel so thank you all and thank you to my wonderful patrons for supporting me see you in the next video bye